Hey everyone, so I was gone there for about a week. The common cold had me down. But speaking of being down, it looks like the FGC has had its own ups and downs the past couple weeks. So first of all, Street Fighter is in the Olympics. That's amazing. And Momochi came back from streaming Smash to win the Super Premier, probably the most stacked tournament in Japan. But the Olympics has been kind of struggling in ratings recently and is a huge burden to its host cities. And because Momochi didn't want to join Jesu, he is only getting a very small portion of the overall prize pool that he won at that Super Premier. So the requirement for Japanese players to join Jesu will affect all the future CPT events. And I'm sure it'll be a big deal at Capcom Cup if Momochi makes it to the finals because it seems like he's going to keep holding out in protest. So I think this kind of is one of those things that reinforces the notion that esports is bad for the FGC. But I think we need to take a look at our past and take lessons from our past in order to do things correctly in the future. So with that being said, this video we're going to take a look at some other infamous tournaments from FGC Pass and see what we can learn from them. So Tournament Legacy was my first experience with what unfortunately was something that was kind of common during the early Street Fighter 4 days. That was big dreams, big money promises, and bad execution. And it all started all the way back in 2009 when they were actually known as Active Gamers and they were hosting their first tournament, Triple Threat. Now, Triple Threat was kind of famous because it promised these huge money prize pools at the time, which was a $2,000 pop bonus. And it also actually brought out Justin Wong to the event. It was one of the first few times he was coming to the West Coast before he actually moved out here. So a young naive offcast that was actually going by a different moniker at that time volunteered to help out with the event. I actually donated a couple of consoles for setups. I actually borrowed my cousin's console for it. And I even did some good old free community management by going on the SRK forums, letting people know about the tournament, saying that it was legit and telling everyone about the after party that no one really actually went to. And Active Gamer slash Tournament Legacy was actually run by a guy named John Nelson at the time. And despite having a really good turnout at the event, and you know, he even brought out Justin Wong, he actually made a critical error right before the tournament. So John didn't actually realize that you needed to withdraw funds from PayPal. That's actually how registration was done a few days in advance. So when it came time to the tournament, he actually didn't have the prize pools that he promised because he was depending on the registration fees, which were being held up by PayPal. So the tournament actually took a really long time to run and by the end of a long day, all the participants were disappointed because they weren't getting their prize pools. And one of the things that was actually said was that they wanted some type of collateral until they got paid out. So they were actually saying that they would take the tournament setups home until active gamers would pay them the prize payouts that they promised. So despite having a big failure at their first event, Active Gamers actually made some connections within the community. So Active Gamers rebranded as Tournament Legacy and they partnered up with Level Up to host Wednesday Night Fights. Active Gamers or Tournament Legacy actually provided the Proud Bird venue that we all kind of came to love, even though it was all the way by LAX. And this is where the Marvel vs. Capcom 3 era started. This is where I started streaming and that's how I started streaming Wednesday Night Fights. And this all culminated in SoCal Regional. So Level Up produced SoCal Regionals it was a super successful event and it had that amazing Tokido pose with the Raging Demon. Pretty great event, that awesome match with Valle and Daigo playing against each other. The thing was is that Level Up got most of the praise for SoCal Regionals. So Tournament Legacy wanted to be at the forefront of the next event they were putting together, an event known as Revelations. So Revelations offered the biggest prize pools the FGC had ever seen. This was pre-Pro Tour era and also brought out players that no one had ever seen before. So the arcade legend himself, the mysterious god of Japanese arcades, Sako, who until at that time had never attended an international event, he was brought out for Revelations. The problem was, is that Revelations was also scheduled directly against CEO, which then was an EVO-backed event. This is when there was like Road to EVO events. And this was pretty bad because this was CEO's second year and this is, you know, after a year of them basically being formed in this crazy way, which I'll talk about later. So Revelations went off pretty well. You know, there was a famous moment where Wolf Crone basically walked out the building after Mago beat him. Everyone got paid out, but shortly thereafter, Level Up and Tournament Legacy actually parted ways. Tournament Legacy had actually been losing money hosting Wednesday Night Fights at pretty expensive venues. So that was the end of their relationship. 
So I think most people probably thought that that was the end of Tournament Legacy and the FGC. However, in 2012, they came back with another Revelations. However, this one would have no involvement from Level Up and the stream itself, no California based team was actually there to produce it. It was actually a team from Arizona that they brought in and the commentary in the event was really weird. It seems like they just pulled over like random players to commentate when they could. And actually there was this one day where the assist me crew was just there, I think to do like an appearance, like a meet and greet, but they were actually put on commentary for hours and hours. And you know, the assist me crew is great, but I mean, they're not, you know, meant to do commentary on the games. Like, you know, the guy in the doom voice trying to, you know, call out moves and stuff. Anyway, a lot of players actually attended, a lot of top players came out. I think because of the huge prize pools that were promised, I think they promised even more than the year before that. And I think they thought that that would bring the whole community back again. But not surprisingly, shortly after the event, uh, even though people kind of praised some parts of it, uh, Filipino Champ famously posted multiple times that John Nelson owes him money. So speaking of big, crazy prize pools and flying out players, we have to talk about the event that led to the creation of CEO, that is G-A-M-M-E or GAME, which was supposed to be held in Florida, in Orlando, Florida, actually. So the big draw of this event was that they were actually gonna fly out Japanese players for a 5v5 exhibition against Empire Arcadia. They were also promising a $5,000 prize pool. And this is when both things, especially having Japanese players at US events was super rare. I think this got announced in 2009 and it was gonna happen in 2010. And this was designed to be like a full on gaming convention. Like this was actually kind of ahead of its time in this instance because for years fighting game tournaments just focused on the tournaments, but it promised to bring out voice actors and composers and to have all these different things to do if, even if you weren't into playing in tournaments. So uh, game was a uh, tournament that was supposed to happen back in 2010. Um, I had already been doing local events at different bars like Hooters restaurants, uh, local college bars, stuff like that. So, uh, and Will's Pub actually was where I first met Manny Camacho, the guy in charge of game. Uh, and he just came to one of my events. He goes, hey, I'm putting something together in a few months. Um, you know, I'd love to uh, talk to you about the local community, see how I can help you. And he was actually a super helpful guy. He came to the events. He had some monitors back when I barely had any uh, and everything was pretty much community sourced. And then he's like, hey, do you want to be my right hand like promoter for game? I'm like, yeah, of course. And that's where I just started to kind of go downhill from there. And uh, But he uh, basically just promised a lot of things, uh, started talking to people and like having to defend himself like, yeah, this is really happening. And uh, you know, stuff like that. So he put it together and then just leading up to it, just started getting these weird messages and like, you know, not gonna be able to pull this off, all that. I'm like, all right, you know, it is what it is. And I'm kind of warning all my closest friends, like guys, we might have to do something if this falls through. Uh, and it fell through, you know, about three weeks out. And he's like, uh, guys, I can't put this on anymore. Too many people are like, uh, you know, uh, questioning it. Um, and that's where, honestly, I had no intentions of replacing it, doing an event. Basically, uh, everyone's like, guys, what are we gonna do? I'm like, you know what, let me see and, and kind of look around. It's only three weeks out. I've never talked to a hotel about signing anything. Uh, and that's where Plank, uh, Jonathan uh, Graybeal from the Plank series, uh, or I'm sorry, Pound series, his nickname was Plank, uh, kind of reached out and was like, hey, uh, I, I couldn't help but notice everything going on. I know he wanted to do Smash Melee. Um, you know, is there anything I can do to help? I'm like, well, I'm just kind of looking for events. He's like, well, I don't have any money, but I think I found something that could work. I'm like, what is it? And I had never thought of it. It was the Central Florida Fairgrounds. And they had these like halls that were covered uh, with big AC units and didn't have much budget or anything. I'm just like, let's just do this. And the event as it was ending, I remember my best friend Orlando, uh, I'm like, dude, as we're like closing the garage of this place after a weekend of AC breaking June heat, uh, it just closed down like, you know, what, man? I think I'm going to do this every year. And that's where it kind of just hit me. And the CEO name came up like a week before the event. I just went to bed one night. I'm like, you know, what? there's a community effort. We're in Orlando. And I just said CEO. And I'm like, what are the other things CEO can mean besides, you know, chief executive officer, stuff like that. And I just said the name CEO, CEO, like at least 200 times uh, in, in my bed. And then welcome like, guys, what do you think of the CEO name community effort Orlando? And I was like, we like it. Let's do it. And CEO has now gone on to be probably the biggest, if not second biggest fighting game tournament in the world. Now it has a partnership with AEW and it's bringing in wrestling and fighting games together. And CEO is now a brand. It has multiple events a year. And I think this is just really exemplified by the name of it, which is Community Effort Orlando.
So despite successful events ran by MLG, ESL, and DreamHack, the FGC has always been wary that esports is kind of like this bubble that's gonna burst and the floor is gonna fall out and people aren't gonna get paid and it's just gonna you know, ruin the grassroots events. And I think in one case, these fears were somewhat proven true. So ESGN was this group in Europe that launched this Fight Night brand, which was this invitational tournament. So again, bringing out the best players in the world, offering these amazing prize pools. But this one had a twist. It brought in that crisp, clean esports production value into the broadcast. It highlighted the players' personalities and developed storylines between different players. And ESGN actually combined FGC talent with esports talent, and it provided a lot of opportunities to people, but it ended up turning out to be too good to be true. That's because ESGN and its parent company became embroiled in this whole scandal where tons of ESGN staff went months without being paid. Thankfully, since then, there's been other high quality productions that have tried to focus on the players and use FGC talent. This is with E-League and the Street Fighter League. I think we can all agree that for an event to be great for the FGC, you need to keep the community involved as much as possible. You need to make sure that as many players as possible are having a good time, not just the ones at the top. And an event gains prestige with time and great competition, not money, even if the event is the Olympics. When a new face comes in, if you don't understand this community and what it's about, you're not going to succeed. Um, you're going to put money in and you might not see that return in the first year. And then most just they they run right after that. Uh, and then the guys like us uh, are still around because we've been doing this for so long and it's our lives. Capcom, Bandai Namco and NetherRealm have done a great job of hiring from the community to direct their esports initiatives. And having these pro tours in place has lessened all these random tournaments appearing and being full of false promises and desperate cash grabs. However, they will have to continue to make difficult decisions and take chances on collaborating with people because they need to continue to find sponsors for these pro tours and leagues. And even in esports, finding non-endemic sponsors is something they've only barely begun to figure out. So I pass the question on to you. What's the worst tournament that you've been to? Do you think the FGC benefits by being part of the Olympics? And do you think there should be this governing body for competitive gaming or even just competitive gamers themselves? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to give a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more FTC analysis coming direct to you. So CEO Taku, uh, if you go on our Twitter at CEO Gaming, we've already posted the schedule, cogaming.org slash CEO Taku. Um, we'll have three streams for it, actually. We're going to be on CEO Gaming, Polarity GG, and Data FGC um, for the weekend. You know, it's not at the point where it needs like four to ten streams like our other major events, but it's getting there. Um, but yeah, uh, all the anime action, please tune in. Uh, the Guilty Gear trailer, uh, we're going to be airing it uh, right around Grand Finals on Sunday night. So uh, for Guilty Gear Exit Rev 2. Um, so please tune into that. I, I'm actually really looking forward to just being with the, the community and watching that and uh, seeing what song they play and what character they're going to show off and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, tune into CEO Gaming.